Hi there, welcome to another episode of The Heart of a Youth Leader. Great to have your company with us. So this morning, a colleague of mine asked me a great question. They said to me, Andy, how much of my day should I spend praying for what I'm doing? And I was like, wow, that, wasn't that a great question? And I'm one, one that all of us as youth leaders have probably uh, wrestled with m on more than one occasion. Uh, and, you know, I was saying, well, you know, how much is enough? Can we ever have prayed enough to do what we need to do? Uh, and I think at the root of the question is, would my boss think praying is activity, is praying is work? And yet our churches would, would expect us as youth workers to be praying for the work we do, that we are leaning on God for his, his planning and his guidance for us, not expecting us to do it all out of our own strength. And so there's this balance of well, how much praying and how much working. Uh, all I reckon is we probably are working too much and praying too little. Uh, and maybe if we, if we prayed more, we would be more effective and more fruitful, which is a great Bible word, isn't it? Fruitfulness is what we're looking for, to see fruitfulness of more young people growing in their relationship with God. Uh, and it's about prayer. Uh, and I was uh, reflecting on this uh, well-known story from scripture uh, yesterday. It comes from Luke chapter 19 uh, and it's the famous story of Zacchaeus the tax collector. It says in verse 1 chapter 19, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was but because he was short he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Now, it's a wonderful story and there's so many things we can draw out and have been drawn out. But the one thing I really was struck by was right at the start. Picture the scene. There's a crowd forming because Jesus, this person who's known for the miracles, known for this incredible teaching, is wandering through their city, wandering through their town. Uh, and Zacchaeus, being a small man, couldn't see because of the people blocking his way. And he's like, what can I do? What can I do? I can't see Jesus. There's things blocking my view. And so he shins up a tree to get a better view. And of course, by putting himself in a better view, put him in a better position for Jesus to see him. Because Jesus walking past seeing the crowd, sees this man up a tree. What's a man doing up a tree? A child maybe, but an adult? Uh, and it got me thinking, what are the things blocking my view from Jesus at the moment? What gets in the way of my relationship with God? Uh, and do I expect him to remove those things? Or is there something I can do to get a better view? It may be that uh, you, you feel there's some things in your life that are blocking your view of Jesus at the moment. I know for me, I've, been, I've asked this question in the past, I've realized that maybe staying up too late blocks my view of Jesus because I am so tired the following day that I just don't really want to spend time. I just want to get through what I've got to get through. I know it's very easy for me to find that actually I don't always have a quiet time. I don't always read my Bible. And there's usually a reason for that. Usually it's because I've got up too late in the morning or it's because uh, I've been distracted. Or maybe I've actually felt that doing stuff is more important. Getting on with the work is more important than spending time with my father. Uh, and I need to get that obstruction out of the way. I need to make my number one priority time with my Heavenly Father, knowing that He loves me, that He delights in me, and He's just waiting to hang out with me. Uh, and so I need to, to find a routine. 
Uh, and so I've got a routine of getting a coffee, first coffee of the day and hanging out with the Lord. What's, what's your way of basically shinning up the tree to be in his presence? What is the thing you can do to make sure that you do hang out with him? What are the things that are stopping you from seeing him? Is it, is it a, an insecurity in you? Uh, can we feel that it's a bit of an indulgence to spend time reading, especially if we've got family uh, and they need our attention, uh, we can feel like we're neglecting them. We need to prioritise our relationship with God. Not neglect other relationships, but make this the priority of each day. So my challenge to us is simple, is to think about what is obstructing your view of God at the moment? What's getting in the way? Uh, and first of all, name those things. And then to think through, and what can I do to get a better view? I can't keep going through the same, same things, same procedures, same routines. The same, the same uh, routines produce the same results. So if I want different results, I've got to change the routines. Uh, so what, what do I need to change to get a better view? It may be going to bed earlier so that you have more energy for the next day. It may be carving time to have a coffee with God. Maybe you need that special place. Maybe you need to put a chair in a corner and say, when I sit on that chair, I'm praying. Uh, maybe you need to find a hideaway somewhere. Maybe you need to go for a prayer walk each day at a certain time. Go for a walk at lunchtime and meet with your father and spend time praying with him. Listen to uh, some Bible podcasts or um, you know, Bible in a year kind of stuff as you walk. What is it you're doing to get a better view of Jesus? Because we need to give him, uh, we need to make ourselves available to him, don't we? It's not about how much do I pray, but it's am I being available? Am I, am I talking with, with God? Am I listening to God? Am I asking for his wisdom, asking for his guidance? Uh, and, and, and know that, that God will see us. God does see us and he will see us and he'll see our desire to be more with him. It's not about how much we do. It's not about, uh, it's not a competition uh, between us. And we can do that sometimes, can't we? I think by reading the Bible in a year is fantastic, but it can feel like a competition with other people. Uh, and, and actually sometimes just reading a verse every day is as, is as fruitful, as useful as reading four chapters. Uh, the importance is the relationship, not the activity. And that's my challenge this week. Can you find some space? to think through the obstructions for you in your relationship with God and work out what does it mean to shin up that tree. Go for it. Mm -hmm.